Hello. So, what we're going to take a look at um, now is setting up the necessary software to set up the LAMP stack that we are going to be running on our web server in our web server security course in the information security program at RRC Polytechnic. So, what I have in place now is I have my Debian VM installed and configured in VirtualBox. I have it running here. I have also set up PuTTY to connect to that virtual machine. Now, um, you can't connect as root over a network unless the system is vulnerable. It's always a good idea to not allow root connection or administrator connection over a network um, to any machines because those are two accounts that are typically found on most environments, right? Um, if you set up an instance of Linux somewhere, there is very likely a root account. If you set up a Windows machine somewhere, there is very likely an administrator account. Hackers know this and will start targeting those accounts trying to crack those passwords because there's two part to connect to a machine. There is the username and the password and hackers need to know both. So, I mean, it's easy, but it's not a given to find most user IDs, usernames. That's not the case with the root account. It's a safe assumption that there is a root account. So, properly configured systems do not allow root connections remotely. So, what we've had to do is, as you see here, we've had to log in as our regular user ID. Once you're logged in, we now want to install the necessary software. So we need to go in and add or modify the environment. And if you're going to do that, you need to be root. Now we haven't set up sudo in this environment. And as I've said, I want you to look at these things from a risk analysis, critical analysis of risks and vulnerabilities. So you want to not install anything that is unnecessary. And if you've already taken my pen testing class, you know that there are some vulnerabilities around having sudo running. It does introduce a risk. It's convenient, there's no question. But convenience is not the point. Risk mitigation is the point. So we're not going to set up sudo on our web server. It's risky. So if you need to do something as root, you need to become root when you're logged in. We'll do that with the su command. Substitute user, switch user, whatever. I, I don't care if the command is su. I also want to reload my shell environment so I have the same shell I would have if I was logged in as root. So I will say su space dash. That allows me to not only become root, because I don't specify a username. You don't specify a username, it assumes you want to be root. You want to reload the root's environment, or whoever's environment, you use the dash. In most cases, when you become root, you type in su space dash. Don't forget the space. And enter. And now it wants root's password. As you set it up, you should probably know your root password. Now I'm logged in. Perfect. I am root. I am now ready to install software. The software we are going to install is going to be the following. We are going to set up Mariah, specifically the server. So we're going to apt install Mariah database server. We're also going to install Apache 2. We're going to install PHP, because that's what we're going to be programming our website in. And finally, we're going to install the driver that allows PHP and the Mariah database server to work together. So those are the four components we are going to install to create our app development environment. Before we do all that, however, anytime you are going to install software, you want to ensure your environment is up to date. 
So you always want to apt update and if necessary, upgrade. So apt update and apt upgrade, and then you can go through and install the necessary software. So let's take a look at that. We should be pretty close to being up to date. Perfect, apt upgrade. We just set this up so there's nothing to upgrade. Also good, and now we can start our installs. Typos will get you every time. You can also use the dash Y switch to, to presume yes. Uh, I rarely use that, but it is an option. You can also use the apt get command, which is an option, but the apt command gives you this little status bar across the bottom which I find is nice. It gives you an indicator that something is actually happening, and I like that. Perfect. It looks like it's done. The next thing we are going to install is Apache 2. Again, yes. Depending on your internet connection, and what kind of hard drive you installed your virtual machine to will dictate how fast this happens. My internet at home isn't that great, but I have a solid state hard drive for the um, virtual machine files, so the install can be pretty good. The next we need to install is the programming environment that we are going to use in Apache. We set up the web server software, Apache 2, now we are going to set up the programming environment. This could be um, a Python based, but we're going to use PHP. All right, and again, yes, or the default. So now we have the MySQL or Mariah database DBMS software running. We have Apache with PHP for the programming environment now installed and ready to go. The last piece we need to do is to install a bridge between the two, and that is the PHP MySQL package, which will give us the necessary drivers. Perfect. That should be it, okay? A little bit of a sanity check that you can do is you can understand your IP address and you can open up a browser and test out that address. All right, my address is 253, so I'm going to use 253 here. And it looks like it works. Now we haven't tested the PHP or the Mariah database software, but at this point we have an Apache 2 web server. We've installed Mariah database. We've installed PHP. We've installed the bridge between them. We are now ready to start looking at creating a secure website. As always, if you have any questions, please check with your instructor. Thank you.